The Comedy Store would like you to know that the views and opinions expressed in this podcast are strictly those of the speakers or authors and do not necessarily reflect or represent the views and opinions held by the Comedy Store and its affiliates. She did. Wait, is it on? Are we ready? Oh, we're ready? All right, we'll say something. Fuck that. Winks, come on. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> that's why we need nut. the cans. Unbelievable. That's what I'm talking about. Someone could have just said that would have been a nice moment. All right, are we rolling? We're rolling. There it is. Very Winks, exciting. He, things, the show's not going until Winks gives you the wink. Mm-hmm. So he's got a ponytail and a there wink. There it is. There that's it is. We, that's <laughs> a perfect. That was uncomfortable. That was rapey. <laughs> that was very. Extremely. Yeah. I feel like you he, don't get in the comedy store. I feel like he just got inside me. Yeah. <laughs> well, he definitely did. He got up in my guts. And, and I will say this. Me too. <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> this isn't Don't this isn't the way it always starts. But well, it hey, needs, we're in it. It needs hey, to start more it. like it. We they are. just got off stage. So uh, yeah, they're they're warmed up. They're warm. going. They're flowing. Feel we're gonna good. flow it out. I'm yeah. excited. Great. It's been so long. We haven't mm-hmm. haven't had you. We were supposed to have you guys on a few times. It got all messed up. But this now we have this Kalar well, Brothers. Thank, Thank you for having us. Great to be here. Doing this. First question: Which one of you do you think is better? Honestly, at what? Let's get into it. Everything. Everything. I mean, yeah, we have an hard. hour, so um, I don't know. That's, God, that's there's so that, the beauty of it is that like each of us are better at different things. What's so crazy is I, I feel that. like I would say Randy and Randy would say Randy. Yeah, I think that's that is interesting. <laughs> that yeah, very different sense. answers. Um, no, I don't know. What think... about his lovers? Ooh, God. with each other? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't know. God knows. We don't even we don't talk about that. Do shit. you have another uh, sibling? No, just Whoa. us. Yeah, no, that was in unison. It. Uh, so, and you guys are St. No. Louis? St. So, Louis, yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah. I, I have family in St. Louis. and You I, hate them. I feel like, oh, well, I'm from Aren't Kansas City, so oh, geez, you the rivalry. Hate them. Wow, I, that is I, the rivalry. The it's just, just it's, ask a, like Chris it's a garbage. Porter what he thinks about. Exactly. Yeah. It's a terrible town. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I know we stole the World Series in 85. And I mean, if I there was an instant replay, that wow. you would have lost. We I mean, would have lost the World honest. Series lost without World question. Series. So, like, yeah. a tiny invention that really existed back then, it but they was, didn't use, they didn't use would it. have changed the course That's of right. your, your dumb city. Yeah. I mean, no, no, Whoa. I love, hey, I, wow. I'm kidding. I Listen, love there's Kansas. nothing wrong with anything they're saying. I'm from right, Philadelphia. Right. I enjoy a fight. You're from Philly? You're from Philly? You're from Philly? Swallow your elders in Philadelphia. I'm from Fifth and Lucas and grab you Water ice? Get yeah. grab a water ice. Water. Yeah, we going air. I was at your airport this week. We're in, it I terrible. know it. It's the Just greatest. Terrible. That's eight minutes from my mother's house. I, How I great could, is that? As you walk it. down every like jetway, they, they throw ball? batteries yeah. at you. Yeah, they throw batteries at you and <laughs> no, snowballs. It's a classic it's, city. It's that. Especially if he has that. Have fun in Philly, you <laughs> fucking <laughs> asshole. <laughs> It was fun. Eleanor told me not to tell the crowd in Atlantic City that Rocky <laughs> sucks, and so obviously I had to you, do of it. Of course, course you did. So Rocky's the what dumb. The it's, the, the, it's the dumb. That's why we cracked the Liberty Bell. We threw all those batteries at it. Yeah, <laughs> savage idiot. Such a terrible accent. I, I feel mean, like beating the shit out of you. Um, it's actually perfect. It, it is very good. It's yeah. not bad. I'll say it's that. Solid. We're in it. We're it's in it. Suburban. It's suburban. Yeah. They sound like. Simone. Oh, you're, you're saying they're not. It's more of a Steve Simone. Hundred percent. Yeah, we're from. We're from Mount Laurel. We're from. Cherry yeah, Hill. Laurel. We're from Cherry, Cherry Hill. Hill. Cherry Jersey, Hill. It's not even. Yeah, but it's Jersey, part of but Philly. It's <laughs> outer, outer Philly. <laughs> see, outer. They do say that. They do say yeah, that. Yeah, see? Like if, I've, I've said to people, oh, they'll say, I'm from Philly. I go, what part? They go, Cherry Hill. I go, you want me to fuck you up now? Or, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't, fair. I don't go for That's that. I'm from fair South for Philly. you and it's fair Jersey. for that. Fair for them to think it and also fair for you to want to kick their ass. 100%. I will. There's just anger. <laughs> just bubbling everywhere in Philadelphia. They're so mad that they're not. As important as they were gonna be hey, right. 200 How dare years you? ago, we things were, were looking capital. really good. Things for were Philly. looking we were great. jamming, and they were like, "What if we just build on the swamp you guys instead are like, of that?" Is it because fucking we city? broke the belt? Like I don't know. No, you guys are like the Egyptians <laughs> of America. So you think about Egypt. <laughs> Egypt, they came with the pyramids and then the Pythagorean theorem, and then fucking wow. nothing. And then so, like, they, so it's almost Clocks? like the Egyptians like returned the opening kickoff for a touchdown, <laughs> and, and they've just been losing yardage ever since. Like tons of fucking penalties, fucking harsh. And what kind of fucking refs? Yeah, just <laughs> flip it out for yeah. no reason. If Harold Carmichael could have helped. Yeah. Wilbur Montgomery. <laughs> anyway, if they had. 
put that bell in any other city, it would mm-hmm. still be a working bell. Yeah, wow. exactly. That's the kind of crap wow. that's going on in I Philly. Yeah. I, it broke it. I've enjoyed Philly when we've been. It's good. I actually I remember like somebody was like, oh, did you ever go see the Liberty Bell? I'm like, no, why would I do that? Why? But why? We, we were such hood rats, we would never like. Yeah, why would we, you we do We were that? going in the center city. They wouldn't let us. Did so you run like, the steps, though? Like a, no, no. Uh, my dad took us there once. I remember that. We were real little. They said, don't don't run up. <laughs> don't run up. Don't do that. You're going to trip. Don't raise your arms in the air. We never went in the art museum, I'll tell you oh, that. That's, that's yeah. a shit that's show. Like, we were with why Rocky. Put, so why put that statue in front of the art museum? Just basically assuring that no one will go in. People and then go to the statue like, like, like we saw we it, let's it. go, kids. And meanwhile, there's like <laughs> there's like a docent up at the window. It's like, five that, more are coming. Yeah. Yeah. They're like a curator. It's like, five more are coming. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just kids raising their hands. Left. Let's scare him, kids. They, they're coming too enthusiastically. <laughs> yep. Why are they yep. so No one runs that Maybe they Maybe they're aware of the new Monet exhibit. <laughs> nope, nope. They're just yeah, right. just they saw the movie. Selfie. They no, saw someone, the movie. Someone dropped a cheesesteak wrapper <laughs> over there. They really care about this place. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm with Rocky when he went up. He was like, all these years running up these steps. I never knew there was like valuable pictures in here. I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. yeah, I didn't know it was up there either. I, Could I you imagine know. the moment when Sly Stallone actually wrote that line? How dare just you? Him, oh, How uh, dare you uh, pick on my hero? Is he How dare you act like he wrote it? I mean, <laughs> definitely someone else he wrote, wrote the that. First 100%. 100%. He wrote it. He wrote, he wrote the wrote first it. one. I mean, if you listen to the script, there's no way anyone else could write it. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> I mean, yes. line by line, Rick, you're just I like. I will not stand <laughs> for this. Uh, it's true. one of my favorite things. It's just the picture him, the well, look on I his face you, when if, he comes up with lines. And he did write it yeah. with like, yes. with a pencil. With a, it was yeah, probably. Like, he definitely, like, he didn't type it. There weren't computers. Yellow legal pad. Typewriter, typewriter man. Hey, now that's my heart. Yeah, the typewriter. A typewriter typewriter yeah, he store. definitely Single didn't finger. learn the home keys. <laughs> My like dad owns a alone. typewriter store. Did he? Yeah. Did he? Yeah. Yeah. That's so great. That's so embarrassing. It's not embarrassing. <laughs> Our dad sold alteration supplies in Velcro. So, like, if you went and got your suit over at uh, Macy's or wherever and okay. you have to get it tailored because no suit is ever the correct size yeah. Yeah. at all the supplies for that. So it's like a type. I mean, it's the same deal. Yeah. It's like a typewriter. No, no, I feel no, like I'm with royalty probably, now. But you could probably still use that today. You I guess, can, but, but just, we can't. It feels like a <laughs> yeah, you yeah. can. Hipsters, if you're a hipster in Brooklyn, yeah, hip, and you're even like, the you got to remarket this. Back. Hotels need like weird I'll hipster hotels. Need if you live well, in a no, farmhouse <laughs> in upstate New York and you're in a Nancy Myers movie, right? You're just writing there you a novel. Go. And you there need you go. To click, click, click. And get you just, it. You got to get that husband who. I just want you to know, I am bleeding. I don't know how that happened, but I'm someone took a Mitzi. I need a band aid over here. Mitzi, 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 cut you. Mitzi cut us. No, she's Mitzi. pissed. She's a cutter. Mitzi pa- self cutter. So wait, when, I, I, do you can hear I say, our pat I, getting past your story? But first, can I sure. say I remember your? I don't know if it was your first day here, but I'm gonna. This is gonna sound so weird. Sure. It's Uh-oh. weird memory. Mm-hmm. The spider Toyota. Oh, oh yeah, the MR2 spider convertible. Oh, my that was Aha. a great. Thank you, brother. So that you was guys a... drove across country or yeah. something. Yeah, I mean it was the fucking so worst this... job ever. <laughs> this is when you like just need money and you need right. a job. So. We, I don't know how we even booked it, but someone, maybe the person saw us. It was them. money. Like, it was legitimate yeah, money bet. that helped us out. They were like, here's, I think it was like 20 grand a piece. It was a lot of money. And this is in the 90s. This, this, is, this is 99. 99, and they, okay. they said, uh, you're going to start in, you're going to drive this Toyota MR2 Spider across the country. And by the way, they're going to go to all these cities. And, like, they took us to Philly, to go back to Philly. And, like... Took the us guy to took West, West why I Philly. It. Like the, we stopped <laughs> West in West Philly, Philly. and the guy, tr- and the guy to- who's our stage. Okay, so no, no, no. You understand the, the our tour manager. So here's the thing: it's a the yellow MR2 Spider convertible. This bright is like yellow. Tarantino. We're going back a little. Bit. No, okay. So so so, good. so the so the car itself was too small to carry our luggage. It's so we had to have tiny. another guy who was our who was from Philly, kind of like, like the tour manager, who was our tour manager who knew where we were going, knew the hotel, he'd get everything set up in every city had the radio stuff set up he was our tour manager wow and he uh in the middle of it didn't he have like a kidney stone and he had to leave <laughs> had to leave so, in the middle. so now we're stuck in the middle of this country also we didn't know how to drive a stick shift car we lied and said like we a could little sports yeah. car. we had to have someone else drive it off the lot and then we learned on that fucking car in a <gasps> parking lot on their like precious so car funny. Yeah. like it's there was insane. a point like, in the drive where randy it. went from fifth gear down to <laughs> First, <laughs> it's not like we drove over That's a dog. An H. That's <laughs> an L. <laughs> the car like just anus prolapsed. But then, wow. so 
<laughs> so we're we're like halfway through this trip, and this guy's like, "I'm gonna have a guy, my doorman of my building in Philly, son, is gonna come be that makes perfect, perfect fill in. He's gonna be a kid." And so, so we went from an adult, a guy who like yeah. was had kids and knows made what the you hell feel he's confident, doing. Yes. Like, who was taking care of us, yeah. to a kid who was younger than us at the time. We <laughs> and were, the kid came in and was like. He, the first thing he says to us is like, I didn't want to do this. And we're like, don't <laughs> say that to us. You're our guy. He said, like, I don't want to do this. So he we get, go to West Philly. We get into Philly and we get lost. We're in West Philly, like so in the 40s or oh, yeah. In a oh, yeah. bright yellow MR2 spider convertible Just in West like, Philly. Just like, hi, come get me. So Gunshots like, all around. Are horrendous. Yeah. We pull the car over and we're like, where are we? And at that moment, the guy pulls out a map. He's looking at a map. This is in West Philly. <laughs> And then he's like, "Oh shit! shit hold I forgot on. to give you your. It. I forgot I to, to give you your per diem. So he's handing us cash <laughs> in the freaking in the middle Dumb of this ass. neighborhood. We're you, like, I, we like, didn't want you to do this. I'm yeah. so Please excited that it's same. even worse that, than I thought. So that, that <laughs> and was but a, did you drive it to the store? Because so we started at the store. Yes, we started at the store, oh, and then we okay, ended at Caroline's. I had to be here during the day to help that. That's right. Help that. So we started at the store. And God bless the fucking store for allowing us. We said, look, we'll start it at the store, and then you know promote the store. We'll do it at the store, and we'll do it. Meanwhile, they're like, we want you guys to just have the camera rolling all day long and just yeah. do like comedy. We're like, do you understand that when David Letterman, who was still doing comedy at the time and still doing a TV show, when he does a three minute or two minute bit, they shoot like maybe an hour and they get three minutes. OK, okay. so we cannot have this thing running all day, all the time. Like <laughs> I give you 10 hours of comedy <laughs> every a day. day. Well, what like, you whatever expecting? you're paying us, it's An not extent, worth yeah. that. What We're are like, you expecting from so us? I just had no clue what it was, but it was. And God bless the store for doing it. And we'd only been at the store for like a year. So you had showcased before you. So you out here in 98. So we came out here in 99. We started coming out in 98. We're in New York. And then we started mm-hmm. developing a show out here in for NBC in 98 and it which never went but it brought us out here so we started coming out and we really only performed at Largo and at the at the old Largo on Fairfax and then at the uh improv, improv. yeah we never performed at the store and Nick Swartz who was a friend of ours was like I'm gonna bring you guys by the store meanwhile we're headlining all over New York like yeah. we'd go on the weekends and do like two comic spots. strip comic and, strip right. and Gotham and stand up New York and, and Caroline's on the weekends we'd you know we 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 were all over the city the weekend guys like we were working and and so then we came here and Nick's like, you gotta audition for Mitzi. We're like, we have to audition. What, yeah. what are you talking <laughs> about? So like absurd. we're already doing it like here. He's well, like, can't she trust me to do it? We're like, There's oh, how much two time? Of them? Yeah. yeah, how oh, much time are we gonna do? Right. So <laughs> like, they're like, he's we like, you got one. two minutes or three minutes, whatever. Three, yeah. three, three minutes. Three minutes. We're like, three minutes. That's not yeah, even that's enough to like one bit. S- just yeah. show us who you are. Yeah, we're like, she better like this bit we're doing because we're so mad that we had a bit at six o'clock on a Monday. We're like, what the fuck? What the fuck? The sun's coming. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, you shouldn't do comedy and you shouldn't eat sushi. Like, sushi for breakfast and comedy while it's sunny. It's just a bad combo. Bad. Terrible. So, yeah. we, we, we get on stage and we do one bit. Do you remember the bit, Ren? Oh, I hope. Yeah. I think it was Chop. It was a Chop, chop Four Occasion 95. I, I can't chop remember four. what it was. Anyway, I we think did it was one. That. Chop Four. So, we did yeah. one bit, which was like our bit that we've been closing with all the time. And it was fine. I mean, there were just like six people in the audience. I mean, yeah. Who's coming here at like on Monday? But we came over to Mitzi, and she's sitting in, like, those curved chairs just mm-hmm. at the top. The bucket seat. And, her, and yeah. her hands are shaking, and she grabs both of our hands, and she's shaking. And she's like, you guys are great. We're like, why are you doing Louis Anderson? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are great. Are you Gary Shamling? Yeah. yeah. Like, you guys are great. <laughs> hair. Rose the hair. Uh, Where's the mayor? But he was, she was like, you guys Where's are great. And so then we said, so we didn't you. know what that meant. We were like, <laughs> thank you. You does yeah. that mean we're past? We actually asked that. She wow! Because like, she's like, we didn't know. And she's, she's like, like yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, we were like, that's awesome. great. I, and it made us love her that much more because in that moment we're like, oh, we were just showing you like a tiny piece of the thing that we do, and she got it right away. Yeah. She's yeah. like, you guys have. She's to like, there's it. nothing like you guys, and we were like, that's maybe the best compliment you can yeah. give a comedian. You seem like a. Crazy Cruella Deville, <laughs> but how dare you? She but we was, knew. I mean, we, calm we knew. Down. Hey. She was. She was awesome. She, she, she already drew blood. She already drew in blood. In that drew moment, blood. we can take our in shots. In that now. moment, we were like, "This woman is pretty she awesome." Gets it. She uh, gets it. I was. We yeah. were just like, 
You know, because think of her in 99. So her health had oh, started to it deteriorate. Started she was to on decline. the decline, but she was still there. She Absolutely. Was here a lot. She was still driving. Driving. She was up in the office upstairs. Uh, she was lot. like here. Yeah. She I mean, still came by like at least two or three times a week in 2002 when right. I got here. Right. Yeah. So like we, I just so remember. She'd be around. So she was around and we paid for spots. And mm-hmm. the truth is like this was the place that gave us the most work right when we got here this was our and place. it was of all the clubs yeah. in la it was the one where we were like well there's no industry here and there's <laughs> you know was literally not even there's audience. not even a yeah. crowd here yeah so like, like this... i remember like being in the rooms with like sebastian doing yeah. like and we'd be at the end of the night and like brian holtzman would like walk the fucking room and the we just would love watching him do <laughs> it terrifying yep. but hilarious, hilarious. And then yeah sebastian be in front of like eight people doing yeah. like I, Full you character. gotta yep. see this guy over here. You gotta Have go, you seen are you kidding me with these it? people? And like, and like nothing. just to this corner <laughs> to no, but it, he was getting no response. It was so good though. Yeah, yeah. So, In his car, the perfume. Yeah. The perfume, but like he was like that. The Randy and I, to quote the late great Brody Stevens, uh-huh. we would turn to each other and we'd be like. On cadence alone, he should be a superstar. Hundred yeah. percent. And we just kept saying that in our but minds. He's doing it in front of like nobody. seven people, nobody. Yeah. So he's not getting any response. Not because it's not funny, but because they're not. Of course. And it's so big. If I for do three a, people, it's so big. Yeah. It's like a stadium <laughs> act. Right. We were just. We I watched were, it for years, same, having the same and thought. We loved it. Like, we, we, loved were tr- it we were transfixed, and I was yeah. like, "This, I love this dude, and I don't know what's going to happen." I was like, "I don't know what's going to happen to this guy because yeah. if he, if it." clicks and it goes he's you know it's gonna be the stratosphere if it doesn't then he's gonna turn into something crazy (laughs) serial killer and then it did it's gonna be fun either way well it'll be fun to watch good for for him i mean great for him and he we've always loved him but i mean that was there was the fun of that yeah the fun of all that stuff and the dark years we there was the dark yeah we called the dark years they were nobody here but like i mean so our sort of class of comedians we loved it we, we loved, loved it. Like we would come here and we'd see, you know, Bobby Lee started about yep. the same time as us. Johnny Sanchez started yep. at the yeah. same time as us. Like those are the comedians. Freddie Soto. Freddie Soto. Soto R.I.P. Was he was in that in that whole realm? I loved all those guys. of us, and that's we. That's how we got connected to the L.A. comedy scene. Yeah, at least the the club comedy scene because we were yeah. way deep into the alt scene. Right. I mean, that's kind of always what we've done, which is like been in both scenes. So. Even in New York? There's yes. The alt scene. Okay. Uh-huh. That's where yeah. we came okay. out. So we, I mean, when we started in New York, I mean, I remember when we were, so when we started, we were in the at the University of Michigan. I mean, we started even before that. We started in the 80s. Wow. We were 16 years old. I thought you were going to say old. six. No, no. Yeah. 15, 15 years, years old. old. We were, yeah. it was 87. I mean, okay. that's the first, so we've been doing this for 35 years, but we were like, we were young, we were in high school and we tried it and we did it a few times and, and then we did it in college when we were in Michigan and Ann Arbor and in Detroit, Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle. And then oh, yeah. it's a great spot. Ann Arbor and, Comedy Showcase. We were and, like getting up regularly, like every yeah. month and, and weekly, really. And we, I remember we did, we came home on New Year's of our junior year, or senior year, was it? Senior yeah. year, senior year, New Year's Eve. Where's home? St. Louis. Uh, I'm just kidding. See how Kansas he blocked City. it? Are you throwing See some Kansas City it? shade at our ass? Who are you, Fuck Pat, you, who are you Pat Mahomes' brother? Uh, who, are you, <laughs> who are you, George Brett's hemorrhoids? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, I prefer to think of myself as the George Brett, I shit my pants. Shit oh, my great great also had hemorrhoids, so he did a lot of I preparation. Think, but you know what? I think the George Brett, I shit my pants story gets more credit than it deserves. It is a shit your pants story. Yeah. Which is a good story. Yeah, always a good story, but I'm like, it could have been funnier. Anyway, so um, <laughs> That's like, I'm like, goddamn Steve, Steve cardinal Steve, bullshit. No, 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 no. We I was like, hey, listen, uh, Dan Quisenberry would have made that funny. Right? <laughs> he would have come from the. It would have been poetic. He would have come from the underside. He would have understood. All right, so so we were we go to see a comedy show on New Year because we're comedy fanatics. Yeah. And who's in town? At Catch a Rising Star, which no longer exists in St. Louis. When St. Louis had three oh, freaking wow. clubs, yeah. three clubs. It was I down, didn't even know it was yeah. there. Downtown at Union Station, they had the Funny Bone out in Westport, then they had the Funny Bone in South County, and and then they had the Catch a Rising Star down at West, down at the Union Station. And who's there but our favorite comedian, Andy Kindler. Wow. Andy Kindler is doing headlining in New Year's. And we're like, we got to go. We get another friend of ours and we go. And we are losing our shit at everything he's, he's saying. He's killing, killing us, killing us <laughs> and destroying us. And St. Louis dummies who are Don't out get it. to get drunk and for New Year's and bro Certainly dipshits. weren't there for him. Like he didn't have 
cultivated. I mean, he had been doing Dr. Katz and whatnot, and he had like yeah. he had his audience, and there was a. Fa- I mean, look, we were there, and there was a fair amount of us. But, but then there were a bunch more of- people who were like, "I want to get drunk on New Year's and, and and yell at a comedy show." And he went off on so many people, and they took off, and it was such a weird set. And <laughs> after the set, Randy and I went up to him and were like, "Hey, do you want to?" You will. You want to make a few thousand dollars and come to the University of Michigan? We'll bring you to come. I mean, I like, guarantee you, there's no way. He, after that set, he thought he was going to get like a gig <laughs> out, of invite, yeah. out of that set. Wait, how did you get him a gig? You so, got him a gig. So $1, we $1, were booking. We were part of the student That's like board that booked comedy comedy shows, and we created a comedy show. We kept a comedy show going, and you know. We were we were so excited to have him come. We opened for him. We're like, Look, man, <gasps> here's so the deal. Nice. We're we're gonna get a ton of people. We got like 300 people out to the show because we just loved him and it was a great show. But we this is before woke culture, so you could have fun on a campus. Uh, it was great. It was it was a great. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. great. Yeah. And could. and we said, watch our set and please, like you know, we're on our way to law school. We almost went to like different law schools. We we got in. We got accepted. We were on our way. What? We're like, watch our set and please. Just tell us what you think. We didn't say. Tell Should us. we go to law school? No, we didn't put that. Oh, didn't on. Didn't put that okay, on yeah. him. No way. But we said, just the tell scales. us. What you, tell us what you think. To... So <laughs> we go to get pancakes after the show, like late night pancakes at this place called Silverman's with him, and he's like, "We're like, all right, let us know. What do you please like, hit us? Sh- hit, hit us, us with the truth." Yeah. And he was honest. He's like, "You guys are so fun and fun to hang out with, and and very funny. And when we're hanging out, your material's got it. You got to lose all your material. It's like you got to get to like either I live in L. A. You got to either get to L. A. or New York, where there's like a really good comedy scene, and yeah. those people will bring out from you the stuff that you're doing just in us hanging out and just you guys being funny in that way, and that will sort of push you to write better material, and you'll get to a better right. place. And if you do that, you'll be on TV in three years. And we were like. Okay, oh, that's it. So Went home, called our wow. parents. We we're like, we're not going to law school. Fuck that. <gasps> yeah. How long did they not talk to you? Uh, oh, they, they were, were cool. <laughs> they were cool about it. What? Because well, we were smart about it. We were like, we'll defer for a year. We won't. Ah. So we won't close the door entirely. Dangled Check parent. it out. Yes. And I then just, we were like, we made it. I like it. It's, got it was in. a big so move, and yeah. so yeah. like we and, and no one in our lives, no one in our family, no one in our sphere sure. had ever tried also, even anything. Also, there right. were no twins doing it. Like that's the other thing is there like, were like no teams. There were no. There was twi- teams, but there wasn't twins. Who, I don't who was a tween. team in 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 eighty seven? I mean, oh, eighty seven. Yeah, there weren't. Okay, yeah. I'm maybe thinking there was like it was a big Zach deal. and Mac and like you know those big <laughs> spaghetti and meatballs. Spaghetti and meatballs. I was going to say that a team. I don't know. What was yeah? Absolutely. Jeff Dunham and Peanut, Willie Tyler and Lester. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but no, what was the they're other They're not ones? twins, though. Are they? <laughs> like, I, we, so we didn't, they never made it to us. They right. never made it on yeah, our maybe radar. It never went, yeah, I right. know what you're yeah. saying. They never got so giant like, either. There was no internet. Yeah. So. Put you're it right. this way there was no one out there that we could point to and be like, that's the career we want. Mm-hmm. Look at how these guys are I doing it. They're, yeah, they're yeah, doing yeah. it in a smart way or an interesting way. And like, that's what we want to be doing. So, like, we were fans of, like, the Beastie Boys and the way they had fun on stage and the way they interacted with each other. And we're like, that's interesting. And that's really cool. There were some teams in New York. There were two teams that we loved in New York. Yeah. Just from the days of, like, MTV back in that day. Like, that were really good. There was a, a team of dudes called Premium Bob. They were amazing. They were oh, more wow. performance art. Yeah, like, more like downtown performance art scene. They were they dressed as, like, two UPS delivery guys. <laughs> or generic. And they Mitzi were, would have loved that. They no, were just. I mean, they were Costumes way, too? way. They were. <laughs> way, they were not, like, club comics. They mm. were, like, a. Like a different. It was, like, performance art. They, yeah. They would perform at, like, the kitchen in New York, which was, like, mm-hmm. w- down on, like, 10th Avenue and, like, 14th or, or whatever it was. And, like. They just, you know, just were doing really interesting stuff and they had cool interactions with each other that were like, that's interesting. And we were influenced by them. And, you know, we just felt like there's a lot of cool stuff going on. Then we started getting influenced by people like Jeff Ross and, you know, Sarah Silverman and John Benjamin and Sam Cedar. And like you kind of. So like Kindler took us when he came to New York to do Conan. He's like, you want to come around and I'm going to work my set out for Conan. You can come around and hang out. And we were like, for sure. So we introduced us to Frank Smiley, who was booking it at the time, wow. Conan. And then we went around to, we went and saw this. And we went to Governors in Long Island and did a <laughs> set with him. We went down to the Boston Comedy Club and Andy was just like, 
to Masavi, the guy who was running that club. He's like, you know these guys? You know these guys? And he's like, no. no. And, <laughs> and we're like, of course you don't, because you shouldn't. And uh, Ken and, was like, these guys are fucking great. Put them on the show. I mean, it was so nice. Wow. So there were like a couple of moments like that where like I was a PA on Exit 57, which was a show with Amy Sedaris and oh, Stephen wow. Colbert and yeah. Paul Danello and Mitch Rouse and Cindy Campanera. It was an amazing show. Jody Lennon. So the, and that's kind of where Colbert shameless. got his start, right. yeah. I think. Yeah. 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 That's the start. That is of where all Colbert guys. got it. It was kind of like the like Strangers with Candy. Yeah, yeah. It was their sketch show that they did. And I was a PA on it. And Mark Cohen, comedian who played Sarah Silverman's father, Mark. who on is so, so funny. funny. I love him so much. So I love funny. him so much. I mean, his greatest, as Jews, he did the greatest Jewish <laughs> joke ever, ever Wait. on his A list special. On the A list special. He's and like, he said he got lost. He said he got lost in his set and he just did it out of reaction. He just said to the audience, Check out Bavaka Shah. And then they yelled back at him, hey, hey which and is like something you do in Hebrew yeah. school. Shekhar Bavaka Shah means, said, means hey. be quiet. And then they, they said, hey, and he's like, Jews. Jews. <laughs> Unbelievable. Hilarious. So, so Mark, so so he Mark, did that and we loved him for So Mark Cohn is like, I'm working, they're shooting all the studio stuff with in front of a studio audience, like mm -hmm. for the sketch show out on, at Silver Cup Studios or at Kaufman, Kaufman Studios in, in Queens. Queens. And I'm like working it. I'm just a PA. And I'm standing outside with Mark. You know, we're just talking because Kindler introduced us to Mark and we kind of I knew him a little bit. And this guy, Ted Schachter, who was his manager at the time, like, who, where was he? At the, I don't even forget where he was. But he's so a big guy in New York. Name. And he was yeah. like and Mark Cohn is like, you ever see him and his brother perform? Mark had never seen us. So you ever see him and his brother perform? And Ted Schachter's like, no. And he's like. You better fucking see these guys. That's Damn. so it, funny. And he went out on, and I'll never forget that. And we always bring that up to Mark. I was like, I can't believe this guy's like going out on. And he's a like, I did. Yeah, he's like, I did what? Something. Like he doesn't even <laughs> yeah. remember like, it. Dude, you went out on a limb he's for like, us. No, I didn't. And we're like, yeah, you did. But it I, was cool. It actually has informed how we you know, treat people, treat and, certainly younger yeah. comics, and how we Good. treat I other comics. I was like, man, this is a community, and people take uh, care of each other. I, I'm hearing this, and I'm like, I can't believe that. They found the guy who was actually just nice to him. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, well, like yeah, so. Because so, everyone else's story is like, so I'm, it's sad, some... I'm sad to hear that you didn't, or I'm sad to hear that you didn't feel like yeah. that was the case because, you know, and that bums me out, and it make and it means that I think the comedy world failed you because you're funny, and so like the fact that you had to like overcome people being shitty to you i i mean obviously way, i think that's how it gets done today it's just you know how yeah. that, that's how it gets done it's today, like today definitely there's definitely more of a camaraderie i think now than when than when you started yeah because when i was waiting tables mm -hmm. i wasn't doing comedy but right. i would watch them and they were so fucking competitive and yeah. it was like don't tell him this one's coming don't do this oh, don't do that so and weird. they would shut each other out the, a the, lot the non famous had right. been here too long. Element mm -hmm. comics were just taking advantage dark, of all of dark, us. It was a dark fucking time. Yeah. So yeah. like we, so we, so we. Do you know you know Charles Greaves? Great, yeah, great comic. I fucking love this guy. Sweet young comic. So we, so we brought him down to Huntington Beach with us last He's week. He's been the, killing to it to the yeah. rec room. He's to fantastic. feature for us, and just the joy of like bringing this guy down introducing him to the people who run it down there him having a good set yeah him being like so gracious and excited yep. that like that happened Which to me fills me with like happiness i'm like same that's part of what is great about this business because you can go two ways with it you can be competitive and shut I mean, people out of trying so fuck you know i mean you know about yeah. our you know about our moment here at the comedy store yeah, of course you i mean of course you know about it well, what i happened? don't like the way what's you're looking the at moment me, what? well no i mean we wrote oh, a bit about Andrew. it yeah so yes 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 so yes. so I mean, somebody it, sent it to him and was like, "Hey, you should put this. If you are doing a doc, you should put this in your doc." And he oh, was I like, hope not. He's like, "Why? Why?" But, but, but he he didn't get offended. Oh, I didn't think he would be offended no, by he, it. But I but he doesn't have any feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but the the point of that. So to the but, story of that is this. But this was that was the time. So that was, was the going time. So here. the reason why it's relevant is because it's of the time. But it also spoke to something that was very hard for us and I can explain myself in a deeper way now on this sure. to you and you can pass it on to him. I, we would say this to him Should if I we call saw him? him. Yeah, get him on okay. the phone. Uh, so, no, but get so... The the hammer. What the fuck? The so, twins. Why don't they like me? Now, um, so, Aren't they Jews? I'm a Jew. They sh we should Not be right. friends. We should be friends. But so, so basically... I know the Haftorah. I, but I think that's why we were hurt. So anyway, we were, you know, we've been doing comedy for 20 years, 15, yeah. 20 years and we were on stage in the original room and 
where we were supposed to go up in the original room, and it was back when people weren't respectable, re- respectful of no. their time. Yeah. They were doing hours and hours. So then that would fuck everyone behind them who came and spent their whole night waiting to get on stage. And so Andrew did like an hour and a half, and he wasn't even doing material after a while. He was just saying stuff. And we're like, if you don't have anything else to say, there's yeah, a bunch know. of us waiting. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. get do your thing and leave. And right. honestly, like, and that – no disrespect. Like the dude sold out Madison Square Garden. Right. We were huge fans of his. I still am a fan of his. And I would, to his face, be like, I fucking loved you in Star is Born. I loved you in the Woody Allen movie. I think you're a great actor. Yeah, I think surprisingly awesome. I actor. was like so happy for him as right. a comedy store person when I saw him succeed in films as an elder person, right. as older in his sure. career. Like I was psyched for him. Me too. But in that moment, when we were standing in the back of the room, <laughs> I was like, this is fucking disrespectful. Yeah. And we were standing in the back, starting to like seethe and get upset. Sure. I like this fire. So, I didn't know this fire existed. So, you guys. Yeah, yeah, they were so, very upset. Yeah. I don't think I was I'm here like, that wow. night. So we get on stage. We'll you know, get, after like literally he walks the room well, and, I mean, and and like and our joke in the set was like the room was a fucking mess after whatever right. he did for an hour and a half. It was a mess. It yeah. was like FEMA fuck. showed up and was like, yeah. here's ever it was like the Sorry, Superdome. Yeah. It was this, like the yeah. Superdome this after shit Katrina. on the banisters it's and people, like, people are like, I guess just we like, live here now. This is a, the <laughs> same experience I had when I started coming here and doing 100%. sets. It was like shit Eddie hour. Griffin would show up for two hours. And you're like, what am I supposed to do? Paul Mooney, like you're I understand. Understand, you feel like you can do what you want to do, but do thirty also, minutes. And also, Eddie, Mitzi Eddie allowed them. And he so, was just hammered, and he was like, yeah, well, "Talk just, about, I, you know, I went to Harvard and Yale." And people was like, "Is that true?" And I'm, I'm a scientist, back, like, this motherfucker. Isn't true. Great, wonderful. I'm so happy for you. Go tell that in the parking. Do the last forty-five <laughs> in the parking. Of that in front of three comics yeah, who want to hear. Who want to hear? So, it. so yeah. we're like, we're not only are we. We've been doing this for 20 years. Yeah. So then he came back on stage. So so this is the part. So we wouldn't have ever written a bit or done anything. If he brings us on stage, he's like, I don't know who, who they are. Who are they? Who are they? Who are they? So mean. He so always, I don't know who they are. Right. So I don't I know who it. they are, so you know they're going to suck. And we're like, thank you. Did he get our credits right? That's yeah. what we got up on stage. <laughs> did, which is the, funny. So then he comes back on stage. I guess we didn't like honor the put down enough he comes back on stage takes the mic and he dropped a mic and kind of damaged it and he comes back on stage and he's <laughs> like, like we need both of those yeah. he's like hey, hey i got their opening line for you we're like you just did an hour and a half get the <laughs> fuck out of here i got their opening line for you no he did it yeah he's like they're gonna be oh like dice God. open for me dice open or dice open for us dice open for us well i got news for you if I did any of my old shit, they wouldn't even be able to stand on this fucking stage. We're standing on the stage, like, now just standing yeah. there watching. <laughs> watching him do this. So he's freaking out. So yeah. I don't know why he's he was so mad, mad. But you're not sure what Yeah, but we did. didn't do anything. Yeah. And, and like, remember, get... we come from the the place of the worlds of Andy Kindler, people taking care of yeah. us, people being nice to us for no reason. Like, just connection. Like, comedy community sure. meant something to us. We felt, yeah. we loved people in this yeah, world. Yeah, but Andy Kindler is not a Megatron star. But, no, but other, but he is. <laughs> I'm a I'm kidding. All right. So, 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 so he, so then he walks off stage. And we were, number one, we were like, yeah, so upsetting. mad we were so we're like um we also have done tell like i don't know what to say we just were like i'm glad he didn't do his old his new shit when he did like an eight minute call waiting bit and it's 2000 like you're, that's your cracking that out so this is in 2000 this is early 2000 early 2000 early 2000 okay. so we pack it away and we don't really talk about it but then we started like you know, we started thinking about we it. We started telling it to we people. We started telling it to people. And people are laughing, and we're like, whoa, Man, that's interesting. Funny. That's such a, so <laughs> it is a funny bit. And then we start, like, talking about it on stage. And we'd never done a bit from that place of, right. like, what the fuck this guy did. So then the bit, we're like, we got to write a bit. We can't just tell the story of this guy disrespecting us. So we wrote a bit that was <laughs> so, so dumb and so weird. <laughs> the bit was this, is was that... So- the bit, we're like, is that he wasn't doing any material for like the last hour of the thing, and we're like, if that's where it's heading, this was the bit. This is, the, and I, 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 we did it on TV. Guys, so I, I want to let you know this is a bit. No, yeah. no this ahead. was the bit. I'm just saying we we did it on TV, so I'm not like hiding and right. saying we didn't. Yeah, do this. this is all right. so we did this bit. We did we it on said, Comedy Central. We said if if <laughs> he's not writing bits anymore, our dream would be that he keeps doing the nursery rhymes, but instead of punchlines, he just reveals a sad truth about his life. All right, so <laughs> not, these are, and we knew that there weren't true things. I should pitch this to him. Don't yeah. pitch it to him. So, 
So, I mean, and I forgot what the first one was. Uh, there was one where it was like, I took a job on a cruise, cruise ship. ship. I needed the money. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> and it's just all that. the actions and yeah. all the things. You know, Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. And it's been three years since I've had a meaningful conversation with my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he doesn't have a daughter. So right. fucking, it's, it's a joke. It's, yeah. a, it's so dumb. And we also and I of, love doing it. It was so, so fun. part of us. So when the we over the top dice is great oh, too. So we good. called the bit dueling dices, and it was such a dumb, fun, <laughs> stupid bit. And we ended up doing it on Comedy Central. And we did it on a special, and people love it. Like people love that we did it, and people who felt disrespected by him ever love that we did it. Yeah. But then we also were like. Hey, we're just breaking your balls the way you broke our balls when we were on stage. Yeah, like, there, there can be no mean. Like, it, it came from a place where we felt disrespected, so maybe that's the the origins of sure. it. But then after a while, we yeah, were like, just like a fun day. You make fun it silly. Like, yeah, so we were so silly, silly. So dumb. And then, like, I remember also, him watching it and not being upset yeah, at all. Like, upset it was about so it. silly. It was so upset. over the top. So over it was the top. Kind of so silly, and it wasn't the thing. And if anything, it's like a weird like impression. Like it's kind of something you would do on a roast. Like if we were roasting him, that would be right. something we would write right. for the roast. Right. Which feels like in oh, some weird way, some way loving. Yeah. Anyway, it's a it's a brotherly uh, it but that's is that's what roast jabbing. jokes are sure. well but yeah. it totally should and hurt just a little so you know what I mean? <laughs> it hurts a little bit but then it should also feel like you look you, if there's a you, little truth to so we every can't kid. make that joke if we didn't have that experience we couldn't yeah. have that if right. that didn't happen it's uh, every time i hear the i guess just the rage from people in that era where it was like you were oh. so excited to come to your set and they're like oh we're Three hours behind, yeah. right? Like Two comics. You just didn't know, and like oh. it was just a hard. It was hard for people who like you know told their spouses. But it, that but, it but it gets you know what? It makes you better. It makes you better. And well, then... yeah, like Felipe Esparza had a completely different. He was like, oh shit, I get to watch Dice for like an hour and I'll have to pay. Right. <laughs> so well, they, yeah. He would sit and watch, but like Nancy Pimento. I don't know if you guys know Nancy. Mm-hmm. She was one of the head writers of Shameless as well. Yeah, right. You guys brought up Cindy Caponera. She yeah. was also on uh-huh. that. Um, and just brilliant writer, but she was brilliant. also the first SNL. female on um, South Park. Yeah, right. So she was working with them, mm-hmm. and she was showcasing. And every night she'd like set up a showcase, and Mitzi loved her. Mm-hmm. But she'd come in, and Mooney would jump on, mm-hmm. and bu- she'd have all Derailed. this industry here. Yeah. And I look, I love Mooney, I never, but I, she, I it's awful. It, and so she stopped coming here. So that so you're not so there's that, a lot of so people that was that the reputation to. of this room, yeah. sadly. Yeah. But it was funny place. because like we, we always it was very few we, people that stuck it out. So then we would go into like the other rooms and people would be like, "Why are you doing stuff at the comedy store?" And we're like, "Cause we kind of like it." Yeah. There's like a <laughs> we like the abuse. Well, but if, it was if, all, if there wasn't no, but, an hour and a half. If he had just done 20 minutes yeah. and brought you up, the, the dynamic of that itself is funny. Totally different. Totally different. The but, vibe is funny. But but I do think the like, the trying to make 12 people laugh, like that prepared us for anything. I guarantee anything. you there were anything. like industry showcases, like for TV shows, like, you know, we auditioned to be on late night shows yeah. where the crowds are terrible. But like, we didn't care. We're like, we've and done that up at the south. store all the time. Mm-hmm. For we've, you know, for 12 people, people who yeah. three of them don't speak English and you're like I don't care <laughs> uh, this is not going to be hard for me because I did this yeah, in front of them we're comfortable in this I know that if, yeah if I get Starting f- the four bottom. laughs you ever watch like an SNL audition like it's oh, just yeah. in front of like Lauren and like two people and no one's laughing and you're like these people are you, the people who get the show are the ones who just Leslie, yeah. they don't care they blow through it and they're like this stuff's funny Yeah, and it, whether they're laughing works. or not yeah. I'm going to do it it teaches you to believe in what you're doing yourself and, yeah. and then you get better but just being like, funny it makes you just be funny yeah which yeah it's great like you said earlier it strips you of the jokes you wrote the yeah. material and it makes you deal with what's in front of you so you have to be present if you're if you're yeah. just doing your material and you're not like acknowledging mm-hmm. what's going on which and is it's, andy's advice which yeah. is another great thing to be able to be very very present in the moment it's so funny we just did the main room up here and followed argus I fucking love watching Argus work now. Is that now. right? He is, hey, Argus. He is getting... Well, he is, <laughs> the newspapers are closed down, and I'm focusing on the comedy again. <laughs> yeah. so weird. I'm like the town squire. Uh, no, but like he's... Speaking of squire, the squire brothers are no, coming up. No, it's Sklar. It's he's, Sklar. He's, no, he's, he's amazing. A ju- That's Yakov bringing up Bill Burr. It's one of the greatest. Oh, yeah. Who is next? Bill Burr. Oh, I love Wilbur. 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 He was a good pig. 
Uh, what a country. Uh, no, but he is right. The audiences oh, yeah. are loving. And there was a time, a long period of time, where he was doing exactly what he's doing right now, but audiences weren't having it. For yeah. some reason, the audiences that were coming here didn't want to have that. So now there's like a new generation of people. And I, I liken what he's doing in like a political and sort of current sure. event sort of a way. His joke pattern, this is going to sound crazy, but I was watching him tonight and I'm like, it's like Mark Norman. I know that's going to sound oh, wow. insane, but Norman no, but gets Norman's the... joke writing is so good, yeah. and he gets such laughs from the jokes that he writes that yeah. I'm like, I'm so, and they're quick. That makes sense. They're yeah, quick so and they're great. super satisfying. So that's yeah. what we were seeing seeing with Argus tonight. Was I was that, just blown away. Like he's like, fully satisfying the audience with all of his jokes, and they're I'm like, this probably feels like what it was like when he was doing comedy in the '70s here. Yeah. yeah. Now He's booking the Tonight Show and getting those sets together sure. and like really, really like on fire and audiences were just loving it. And he's right back there. It's super inspiring to us, people who've been around doing this for mm -hmm. a long time. That like, if you stick with it, if you care about what you're doing, because he's you, constantly he gets, he gets the stage time. That's, but he writes. That's true. He gets yeah. the stage time. But and it's he not just that. Continuously. He continuously writes. Yeah. So, so his whole set now is different than it was a year ago. He's yeah. not writing Putin material a year ago because that shit's right. not happening. Would have made sense. Yeah. So, but he's he's growing. So, as a result. You, if you grow, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter. Yeah, what. and he writes online every day too. Like yeah. not just. I know we make we joke about the, the papers, papers and yeah. stuff, right, but yeah. he literally puts jokes out all day on Facebook, it's great. Instagram. Awesome. It, it constantly. It's like, I'm like, it, it keeps him alive. It's inspiring. Yeah. It's yeah. super, super. It's incredible. incredible. It's comedy. So yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we and always our our joke whenever we follow him is we're like Argus Hamilton, ladies and gentlemen, 29 years old. That's why you don't do cocaine, <laughs> right? You gotta really slow down. That's or no, we said that's what cocaine. Kane does to you. It makes you funny. <laughs> squire boys are funny. Yeah. Oh, squire you brothers. Young squire. <laughs> squire brothers. What are they doing? He lo he lo and you know Argus loves it too. Yeah. Oh yeah. He if you joke with him. I remember when I first started um cuz I wasn't a comic the whole time I was waiting tables. When I came back, I'm well, I would, Tommy would put me on first mm -hmm. in the OR. I remember. Mm -hmm. And I would I'd be so nervous and um cuz it Argus, was you then him. Argus. Then Argus, yeah. right? So and you got to get that Roy Rogers. I, exactly. All I worked on was the intro for Argus yeah. and not cursing, right? Because uh, uh, if right. I cursed, he would he would tell Tom. Well, let, well. let Mitch know. Yeah. Eleanor's, <laughs> Eleanor's got that Philly mouth on her. Uh, Argus, she <laughs> put, put a lot of fucking midnight. time in. Argus. <laughs> well, it's, it's so funny because you had to overcome people thinking that you're a waitress, and it's yeah. like that. It's such a hard thing. That's a huge and mountain to overcome. She was, but awful. she was kind of like she was the den mom of the <laughs> comedy store. So well, but you were a fixture here in a different capacity. And I worked people. for her. I right. was her assistant That's a lot. Right. You know, so people thought I had this like weird in to her, and there is no in to no, miss. But there's right? no. But by the way, there's no in to do. You can't to being on stage, right? Yeah. yeah. There's you no. There's no way to fake crazy. comedy. That's the cr comedy is this. Fucking crazy! I think it's more of a, uh, a illusion than like anything David Blaine has ever done. Why? Because <laughs> we're just talking. I agree. Yeah. We are just talking. We're doing so. Like when I watch, you know, Wilco in concert. When I watch like a band that I love in concert or uh, hip hop artist. Yeah, you, you're like I can't play the guitar, so I just sit here in awe and go, "You are so talented in a way that I never can be." When you are on stage doing comedy. Like that's a moment where someone who's funny around the office, funny Ooh. with their friends, is like, "Oh, I could do that." And the trick, the the illusion of it is, the people who get really good make it seem easy. They make it seem yeah. conversational. They yeah. make it seem very simple. Yeah. I'm just telling a story. I'm just connect you. In your case, I'm gonna connect with people in the audience. Boom, 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 right. and create comedy. When you make it look easy, people are like, "I'm like that. I can, I can do, do that. that." I got it this weekend from. Uh... Uh, Bill Cower, the football coach. No way. No, he's like, no way. he's like, so if I did comedy, I'd, I'd probably do it like you. And you're like, <laughs> like uh, would you yeah, I don't know, Bill. Yeah. Would you, Bill? Yeah, I mean, you, you, you just step so up there. Is that the concussion? So it's type? like two. <laughs> yeah. How many so, years? Look, five yeah, years CTE. pro. All right. Yeah. You've hit, uh, too, one too many hits on the chin. That gigantic. I thought it was Sergeant Slaughter at first. I was, I was disappointed when that I found out who it was. That Mac tonight moon chin that you chiseled. So there's so Came there are two first. two steps to get up to the stage in the, the in the OR, OR. Just yeah. two tiny steps and people are like, "Well, what? You just two walk steps, up those you walk two right steps, you walk right on there." It's like, "Nope." Yeah. You it takes years to be able to there's walk. No on that stage. Yeah. There's no shortcut. There's zero shortcut. Like if you take a shortcut and you skip 5 years, yeah. 
people You're, can tell. Yeah. yeah. It's it's very also, clear. There was this guy, remember Throtchley? Oh, yeah. There was this guy who used to just hang out, and he mm-hmm. would just talk shit about comics. It's mm-hmm. great. And he would just be like, oh, he fucking sucks. And he's yeah. like, dude, you just hang yeah. out and yeah. drink. What yeah. You, yeah. Done it. you don't, you don't so get up. You don't do anything. He started talking, Did he go up? Yeah, he started talking shit to someone. That he was like, I could do better than you. Mm-hmm. And immediately all the door guys were just like, perfect, set it up. Yeah. We're going to set, set it up. up. Set it up. You got one month. Yeah. We're going to do it. And he's just like, easy. Yeah. They get out there. He walks up on stage. First thing he says, Oh man, these lights are way too bright. And then everyone says, <laughs> "Boo!" That's right. Yeah. Give it Just to them. I don't yeah. like, it's like it. it. That's my favorite moment on Howard Stern when, like, the guy who's like cabbie or whatever. yeah, right. no, some guy's like, "Oh, Mark Anthony, I can't. He 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 sucks. He sucks. He's awful." And like, so Howard's <laughs> like, "Okay, so why don't you sing?" Okay, let's well, start. We'll get oh, yeah. musicians his, in get, here, <laughs> and we will set it up. It. We'll get like studio <laughs> musicians. Nice. You know, he, he doesn't say you're wrong. No, no. He's like, okay, okay, okay. I want right. to see it. Let's, let's, let's see. Let's see, right see right we got studio and musicians <laughs> who play with like Steely Dan, <laughs> and they're, they're gonna play with you. They're gonna play with you, and you see Mark Anthony. You see Mark Anthony sit, and the guy starts singing, and his voice cracks. And the first thing they're like, oh, oh, I thought you said he was fucking. So, so that's that. That's the thing. That's, that's jinx, incredible. Yeah. I didn't know he did that. Me. But it's but that so with comedy, it is people think, you know, we were at a show the other night and like T I is doing comedy. The yeah. Rapper, and that's like, God bless you, man. I'll take it I, if you do the work. Dude, if you go into it for ten years and fifteen years and then you come out on the other side and you can do comedy, great. That's like the reason why people are like mad at Tim Tebow for playing baseball. It's like, yeah, you didn't work your way up through this game. Right. Yeah, you, you got didn't a million do it. dollars. Can't yeah. suddenly do that. Yeah. Like, like maybe don't one go person. do a sport where people are like I wish your mom did have the abortion. Right. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> don't no need for that shit. This is like real is shit. Late for this the abortion? Yeah. that so when late, people late term. so when people come up to you, I'm sure there are people in your life who are like, sure. someone says moving to LA and wants to make it in 100%. comedy. And we always get that person call. And our mom will say this to us, like, will you call this woman because they're right. this sure. mom? Sure. Absolutely. So we call them up and they go, what do I need to like make it in comedy? And we're like, you need 15 years and then we'll see. Yeah. 15 years? I mean, yeah. Mark Marin had the my best. 15 year right now. I mean, wasn't Mark? You're at your 15th year right now? You believe Congratulations. That? Yeah. You startled him. Tony, uh, look what you did. Randy broke it. Winks. Randy broke his. Randy's just broke him. Uh, but I mean, I we just saw Mark. Hurry up! Let's talk about Randy while he, can, about, he has no. no I just saw. Oh, Ma- oh shit! He's back. He's back. Can't right. do it. So we just saw Ma- <laughs> Marin upstairs. Marin had the best joke about this. He's like, "What was his whole joke? So it, it takes, takes ten, ten years to create an overnight success, and it and that's the exact amount of time it takes to create a bitter failure, and you don't find out until the night before." So that was <laughs> fucking great <laughs> joke. Brilliant. I'll never forget that joke. It's so great. I would add five years to it. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say, Interesting. I'd yeah. say it's fifteen years because. We know people who are super talented and who have started doing stand up and are like probably six or seven years in. And I'm like, you're really, really good. You have a long way to go. I wow. do. You just believe- have a long way to go because you'll see him in another situation. You're like, ooh, that was tough for you. But you know why that's tough for you? Because you haven't had Not the seasoned. years of. Yeah, you need this. Yeah. You, 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 need, able- you needed four fails on this one before mm-hmm. you got to the right played we had a lot of fails i'll tell you another i'll tell you another yeah we've all had the fails i mean we've been doing it for 35 years and we still have fails i tell this like a few years ago randy and i were downtown doing a show um in this really cool room cranes comedy you know that downstairs in a chinese restaurant beautiful show such a fun show we try a lot of new material out in that show the crowd is like packed in it's a small house but it's great we just came off of like an electric set there and we're like, oh shit, we got to get up to the store. Race up to the store. We were a little late, so we kind of went later in the night, which is always a little bit harder for us because we're more yeah. like, we need the focus of the crowd and we have a lot of yeah. jokes coming at you. Like, it's a lot. Like, if we realize <laughs> that our style is not conducive to drunk people who are not focused. So. It's basically like listening to a podcast on one and a half. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're getting a lot of information fast. Really fast. Right? So uh-huh. we're like, it's coming. So we want it. So we got on stage and we followed, I can't remember who we followed. Can't but remember. Yeah, maybe it was Rogan. It was somebody who, you know. Like a name. Like a Bigger. huge name who the crowd, Joey Diaz. Somebody something who like wild. did something different than us, who a lot of the people in the crowd came to see. Right. And a- Alpha. Well, but yeah, yeah. And brought the energy yeah. and then you know, gave us a nice intro, but we got on stage and we were like, the first five minutes of our act, we were like 
struggling and surprised by it because we had just come off of a great set down town uh, and we were like we've been doing it for years oh, what the fuck is going on and we were like mad and mad at the, ourselves and mad at the audience and then we just had it and then we pulled it back around at the end but it was like not a fun set not <laughs> yeah. a good experience one of those hurtful yeah you walk yeah, just off like stage. what the fuck but we were like okay we got to figure this out what do we do in those situations how do we clean the slate so we were like we need to write a bit that is a our style of a bit mm -hmm. that is a mind eraser. We need to do something that, especially in this club where there is no host, like it's oh, tag yeah. team. People so that makes it that. 10 times harder because you, you know, you need to clear the slate. And so we wrote this bit so stupid and we don't even do it anymore but like we did it for a while we wrote this bit about how we just come out and we're like all right all right how many where my where my ladies out there tonight where my ladies make some noise and ladies make some noise where are my dudes at where my dudes or we at? say dudes first then we're like where are my ladies and we're like oh shit you got me too oh and we go crazy like we're pumping energy we're like all right where are my, where are my single moms at single moms <laughs> and no one no one ever reacts and then we're like Okay, okay, hard to get a, get a sitter. sitter. I understand. Right, right. Good, good, good. And so we kept it. And then we're like, all right, where my where my where my bros at? Bros, where my like, bros. And just bro, a couple people were like, yeah, we're like, all right, where are my bros who recently went on a camping trip with their best bro? <laughs> Whoa. It got cold outside, so Broke you guys back. climbed in the same sleeping bag for, <laughs> for warmth. It was for, for warmth. It's for what warmth. you told your girlfriend for, for warmth. warmth. But then you looked into his eyes for one second. <laughs> I mean, it gets so. And you're like, I'm gonna let him put the tip. Where, in. Are, you Where at? are you Make at? Some Thank noise. you for coming Make out. Some noise Thank you for your, Thank service. You for your <laughs> service. Thank you for your service, sir. And where are my oh, ladies? Of service. Where are my ladies out there who support the war but not the troops? Where are you at? Where, where are, you are you at? Get the fuck get the, out of here. Get out of here, you fucking bitch. By the time we're done with that bit, they've forgotten what was just on. Yeah. And it's, it was like we It was silly enough. Yeah. Silly and big, and big and high yeah. energy, and we can step to it with confidence. And it's also weird and all yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very specific. Alt yeah. And, yeah. and it gets like it, because it takes yeah. them to this place where they, you know, everyone's been seen yeah, comedy like, yeah. where are my ladies at? And we yeah. just yeah, and then we take them into this weird place, and then we bring them back, and there's jokes in there, but it's definitely like our take, a twist on that classic trying to whoop up the yeah. crowd moment that we realized we didn't have in our act until 30 you know 31 years into doing comedy we didn't realize we needed something like that right. until we had the experience of downtown great set come up here great hard time into, what, Beat what your head in. yeah. hard what time what are we said. doing what just happened why did everything ground to a halt and those moments i mean Help. i love it i mean we were miserable and upset and, and bl <laughs> blaming each other which is always fun to watch when we blame each other <laughs> who wins that it's usually your book no you're talking about to your side the, I mean, the worst is you're, you're not pulling your weight <laughs> heckler yeah. if a heckler comes from either one of our sides of the room then it's oh, like so why do don't you, you handle your business and i'm like go handle <laughs> like it i could have put over this there <laughs> it's over there wait wait, wait. so do you, when you, you is it really divided no. that no, way no, oh that's so fucking funny to me we both i don't know why i don't know why Anyone yeah, would I'm heckle definitely us. setting That's up on hecklers on no, both no sides. One, no one heckles happens. us because it's two on one. We're we gonna fucking make crush you. you. We right. crush yeah, people. Gotta be a trifecta of hecklers to right. yeah, even yeah. compete. Yeah, we need three <laughs> coming at us. Yeah. Even on three, we can they beat you with the zone defense. defense. No, we no, can beat you with zone defense. Without a star, the triangle doesn't work. We'll force you to take a tough shot. We want nothing will come easy. So I just this one. I remember we were in West Palm Beach, Florida, and this you also have to be on the road and. Do these oh, gigs 100%. To the so shitty at, gigs. The yeah. shitty gigs. So this is a big club and it was packed, but like some woman was drunk and they weren't getting rid of her and she was talking back the whole time and talking to us. And we're like, so we're this, like, all right, we got to fucking deal with this person. We tried to ignore <laughs> right. you all night. You're ruining it for people. What's right. your deal? We're like, why are you talking? And she's like, you guys suck. And we're like, really? That's where you're going to come from? <laughs> and so we're like, get the fuck we were so mad at her we just start going off on her and we are blasting this woman we are <laughs> you're we, like a dog that just shit in the living room but you don't know that, that you did you something shit. wrong so you're, you're sitting in your shit thinking your feet you're are smart, in the shit that you just fucking did fucking <laughs> dog you're, you're walking the shit around to other people shitty <laughs> dog you dumb fucking you're dog you're a dumb I want to take a, dog. a thing of coins and just shake, shake them in your dumb fucking face you want to get a wet newspaper and just fucking you're a bad dog and we're just like Bad fuck. In the crowd was lovely. <laughs> Loving, but of course, crazy. we're like, well, that sucks now because then we got to go back to our So material. then we send her out of the room, and it, right as she's at the door on the way, <laughs> and, the, the and security's out. like taking her out of the room, thankfully, finally, right. as they're at the door. We're like, wait, 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 wait. 
We have T-shirts and CDs in the <laughs> lobby. If you want lobby. one or two, lay stuff. down some cash. Uh, and then she left. But <laughs> in those moments, though, we hate that as a team because I I love that. Well, I know you love it. <laughs> well, but I mean, you love it because but, yeah, I love your just, act can go yeah. to that place and then come back. Ours. It's, it's very hard to like go right. from that to derail very, and yeah, then put it go, back on and, and just then come back because and be you like, guys have structure right. and I'm a mess. Well, we're long bits. We have yeah, long like, bits, and that was just that an in the moment, spontaneous, fast acting, you know, yeah. missile strike. That's and it's just yeah. different. Yeah. I love that, and it's so unassuming because obviously. You guys don't look like you're no, going to just no, you're not gonna come at you. a cost. And we don't. And verbally. this goes back to even the dice thing, if I can come back to that, which is we will not start a fight, but we'll fucking finish it. Yeah, we'll that is who it. we We're are. We're not going to back down. We'll, we'll, no. We will finish That's a fight. Why are you back down? That's the same. It is the same. But we won't you, start it. We'll never start it. If you get into it with us, you will quickly realize you started with the wrong That's people. a mistake. Yeah. You That's made a mistake. You made a mistake. So That's our attitude. We will Which never start yeah, shit, but like again, if you fuck with us, you will regret it, and that's the way we sort of set it up because mm-hmm. we don't want. I don't want to be in a fight no. with anybody. We I have don't... two other shit we want to do. I'm yeah, like, I'd rather do this other thing. <laughs> and I created. love that you the guys... Sklar's dice rivalry is one I didn't know about, <laughs> but I'm so excited good. to get back. But that's we're folklore. Bring it back. And again, yeah. but but the thing about it is, if I saw him here, and the truth of the matter is, I'd be like, dude, dude. I'm so. I'd be like, he I'm like, wouldn't pro- even remember. I would, say, but too, I would but say to he him, would be like, oh hey, hey, you know, hey. and like, I would be like, dude, I'm so proud of you for all this shit. Not that you even care what we have to say, but like, I can tell you that seeing you in this, as this, like this, guys who've known you from the store for 20 did years. Did you guys see him in Pam and Tommy? He did a great job. I didn't see that. I, did, I have to. I'm a list. I'm a list. But I would be like, you are proud no, of you for you, <laughs> proud of you for what you did, completely. But Unacceptable like, how you treated us on stage. Hundred percent, hundred percent. But a hundred percent proud of you for what you did. Yeah. But uh, like, I love that you guys like managed the alt scene and this scene because the alt scene it's rare. hated the crossover. Us. They hated the store. Yeah, they did not like rare. the store. But we're and like, once we like it. It got busy here. Mm-hmm. They all started trying to creep in, and I was like, Oh, nay, nay, mm-hmm. oh, nay, nay. <laughs> I remember you from when I was waiting table. Day. We heard words. Yeah. Uh, I was like, No, 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 we're good. Yeah, I mean, the the thing for us is like, how can we do the exact same set of material Great. in all these shows? Well, there were a few. But that's people. well rounded, and you should do yeah. be able to do that. I mean, that those audiences are great. I mean, if agreed, you can, if I've you done. Can get there, you can yeah. get there and do your thing. I mean, I think it's shifting a little bit, and it's mm-hmm. maybe it's like there are there was a time where like edgy comedy, and I hate that term, but like sure. pushing the envelope comedy where it's inappropriate and it makes you mm-hmm. a little uncomfortable and sometimes it's not PC or whatever you want to call it. Right. Where that was the like mainstay of the alt movement too. Okay. So that was like a very big thing 10 years ago in alternative comedy was like shock value comedy and like pushing right. things out there and right. like say, saying things that are inappropriate and unexpected and that kind of thing. And that was no, I remember like Galifianakis even doing it to where I was like a couple times. Well, like, him, I lo- I used to watch him in laundry I mean, match with Freddie Soto. Yeah. yeah, he was unbelievable. I mean, and Sarah and and Louis and all those guys <laughs> like was wild. I mean, they were great. And they, and uh, jokes. Sarah also can manage both. Yeah, Sarah can she manage both. Todd Barry can manage both. Todd I Barry, mean, that's yeah. someone else we always looked up to and loved and, and appreciated and. You know Neil uh, Brandon, like he can do mm-hmm. both. Like uh, there are a lot of people out there, who yeah, can do, absolutely, who can do both, and we we are proud that we can do right. both. Like that's a badge of honor that we. Wear. But y'all don't talk trash about either or. No, you know what I mean. You just figure out how to yeah live in both, both. world well, every always. world if positive you will. comedy experiences. How dare they? It always I'm baffled. I'm like we they must just them. be nice guys. And no, they, <laughs> they find their way into it. I it's mean, like, Rick recently did Largo. How was Largo? Uh, it, it was great. I just sure heard, it was. It was a Jezelnik <laughs> show, think so it's, yeah, they were there. Oh, so yeah, Jezelnik. Yeah. So it's not funny. Yeah, yeah. Charles, uh, Charles, speaking of Jezelnik and who we love dearly, Charles Greaves was like, because he's open for Jezelnik. He was like, your audience, because he was down in Huntington Beach with us this week, and he's like, your audience reminds me of a Jezelnik audience. Oh wow! In that, okay. In that they're, they're smart there enough the to comedy. understand the joke. They're there for right. the comedy. They get 
when you are saying they don't care what you're how saying. dark they don't they, care they how don't shocking. care how dark they, they like pin that yeah. dark shit on you like that's it they understand you're making jokes yeah they, right. the written contract the unwritten contract is out there and everyone has signed it right you came into you know this room on. you know that this is like a no yeah. like uptight zone you're here to have fun and you know i mean he he said he could feel it i'm like See, that's funny because obviously we would never go on the road with ju- like we would never go out so you would like think, yeah, you're you- the one person who can make that statement because he's open for other people where he's right. like it's not not the same right, right. he's same. feeling every audience out. he's feeling yeah. all of it and he's like dude this reminds me of this and we're like well that's interesting because we would never know that and that's yeah. really cool because jeselnik is someone that we love he, yeah uh, uh, charles is great I'm wor- i work with him a lot i do a lot of shows with him locally yeah mm-hmm. um and he's just such a good guy I, i've been pushing for him to get a showcase oh yeah here, wanna, so. he'd be great he'd be here. great here. he'd be yeah. great here. yeah perfect he's like so perfect. Good. yeah but i'm glad you did largo i mean that that is a it's a great room yeah. it's a it's a 250 i've seat never theater. done it it's free. It, was, you, it was really fun. i've been there but i've never done it you Isn't should do it yeah. it's wonderful i mean it's a hard room to get into even mm-hmm. for people who do it all the time like we did it and had a show there like we were doing our podcast live there and doing all kinds of stuff we haven't been able to get on a show in like a long time there like yeah. my advice to you it's when like a you, niche thing well like. so my advice to you when you if you're like hey i'm going to do largo if you reached out to us and said and which i hope you would do hey i'm going to do largo any advice for yeah. me as i go up there i'd be like lean into your truth be as truthful as you possibly can be find the truth in your material it's yeah. st- and and go further in the truth than you maybe would here whereas you create something into more of a bit yeah go further into the truth of I your material i think i'm most honest here right but i'm saying like the honesty yeah yeah will Will take you super even far. further yeah oh, got super it. far there you got get it. rewarded I like for that. that yeah so like they love to hear the truth of what you're you're saying there and and it's like a wonderful thing that like again if you can do that there and do that here it's just it's awesome that yeah. would be incredible yeah, yeah not, i fun. always i watch shows from there yeah but i never like i've never like gotten on one i've yeah. been backstage when they're doing i'm like damn i want to work i did one maybe 17 years ago when it was at the old place yeah, yeah. And so that's how oh, I kept wow. thinking. Then I looked at the address. I'm like, that's not the same yeah, place at all. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, yeah. Oh, okay, this is I a, drive this by it. I live right by it. Oh, <laughs> nice. I love it. Over there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but it's never do that stage. I'll never get on that stage. Philly? That don't have Philly. 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 My favorite thing is when people are like, yo, she's so dirty. And then I'll see the lineup. I'm like, ho, ho, hold on a minute. They do dirty there. They're dirty. That dirty. I can, yeah. You can get dirty. I can, of course. But I once did a show where they were like oh yeah she's real dirty and i was like okay it was all girls and i was like am i that dirty like i'm starting to like over analyze mm-hmm. every word i said because mm-hmm. i'm listening to people mm-hmm. talk and the girl that went on before me said something so horrendous that i was like oh i'm, I'm never listening to anybody again you I'm don't not, I'm, I'm not, not that, that dirty, dirty. <laughs> yeah. that, that, gu- dirty. that girl was frightening what she said i'm They're like you, you, she should be taking taken away yeah. what she said mm-hmm. um Please. but what so what do you guys have going on now like i know you got a great podcast do you still do your podcast yes so we do we have two podcasts we do a sports podcast called view from the cheap seats which is sports every week was on espn for a while wasn't so it? we did a show called cheap seats that was on espn oh, okay. um which was basically like mystery science theater 3000 but for old weird sporting events like spelling bees and dog shows and yeah beard beard, like beard mustache, mustache all kinds of weird <laughs> stuff it's really fun and uh so we have another podcast called Dumb People Town, where we break down stories of dumb people doing dumb things with our so co-host, Danny good. Van Kirk, which uh, you guys would both be great on that. So we should set that up. Yes, I come from a pretty dumb town. Well, so if you, you know it. dumb behavior, then you'll, you'll, you'll love, love this. this. <laughs> Just riffing off like the details of these crazy Dumb, crazy stories. news stories, usually from Florida, but most of them. Well, yeah, uh, it always starts like Florida, mean, man. There's a lot of that, but there's so much. It, it's amazing how dumb the world has gotten. And so that's that. <laughs> so and then good. we are working on a reboot of our cheap seat show oh good um for the ufc for fight pass which is their streaming service so we are basically redoing cheap seats uh, with old weird footage in the ufc library it's called the nosebleeds is the name of the show (laughs) like we're watching it from the nosebleeds and so it's us like a new look at this old weird footage that they have so we just shot six of them and we're editing them now and it'll be out this summer 
Oh, that's cool. It's and nice. it's on their streaming service. So they have the UFC Fight Pass is their thing. It's their library of every fight. Yeah. So if you subscribe to that, you can see the fight that was six weeks anything. ago. You can watch any. You can watch all the seasons. You of can watch the, every Conor McGregor fight that ever happened. You can watch like <laughs> my hero. The every first, Irish. Right. Hero. Every episode of The Ultimate Fighter. You can watch all that stuff. And right. now this show, which is going to be an original program that is like a straight. I love It's that. a variety show. I mean, really, it's a it's a variety. And, and show. it's a, like watching like. Ken Shamrock, like old, yeah, so old. So, so we watched you. So, so here are the wow. first six episodes. We got UFC one, the very first wow. UFC ever from Denver, Colorado. Which and the production value is so bad. It's no weight classes. So you have like a sumo <laughs> wrestler fighting a regular dude. Yo, and Jim Brown is announcing. It's the craziest. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> That's Jim incredible. Brown. It's so bad. it's so bad and funny. Brian Kilmeade from Fox and Friends is in the ring. He's the ring wow. reporter. It's so crazy. So. Wow. That one we did the first episode of the Ultimate Fighter reality show, which was unbelievable. We did a, a old b- couple butterbean fights around oh. another sumo wrestler I fight. I performed for him. Did oh, you? Really? Very yeah. exciting. He looks a, like a, a dice performed. show. A dice show. A dice <laughs> show. Say, you know what he, he sat means. right up front with uh, his daughter. Sure Take care of butterbean, yeah. Eleanor. Oh, Butter, you fucking oh, bean, you stupid is, idiot. Fucking. He did not like me calling him Grossberger. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Butterbean. He's a big man. Uh, so we did that, and then a couple other just like crazy, insane fights, and. Then, of course, from the fights, we developed sketches, and we did a couple sketches, and we do a couple studio bits. And, and But it was, like, fun. I mean, John yes. Hamm, Tony Hale, uh, Rob Corddry. Tony Hale nice. one of my favorites. Andy Richter, yeah. Andy Richter, oh, Carrie Andy Kenny. Rick. Like, all these people did. Lorraine, Lorraine Newman. Newman. It was so fun. Nice. They all nice. did, like, sketches in this thing. And so it's going to be really fun. It's like a straight-up comedy. I mean, our dream is to have somebody somewhere watch the show and write in an article the funniest show you are not watching or the funniest show you don't right. know about is on UFC Fight Pass. Right. Get it and check that this show be out. Because, be I, I mean, obviously I'd want someone to be like, the funniest show you're watching right now is on but this. UFC but UFC Fight Pass, they have to have a lot of subscribers, They do. Right? Yeah, I mean, they they do. have a lot. They so have a I lot. think it might reach an audience. Yeah, yeah, it definitely could reach that audience, but all of them might not be comedy fans. Some of them might take UFC so seriously that they don't want to see someone make fun of it. Oh. And some people might just be like, this is not my style of comedy. I happen to think that there's a large portion of the audience that will love what we're going to do. Yeah. yeah. And then pure comedy fans may be like, I'll go subscribe to this just to see this show. Because we had fans who really loved our old People show. People, ba- I mean, right. what yeah. we know is like, and you guys know this, yeah, when well, you do something. But if you do something yeah. in this world, that people like, you know, cheap seats was is a thing that we still yeah. when we go on the road. It's your passion. People yeah. ask us all the time on Twitter when we're on the road, when are you bring back cheap seats, when are you bring that show back, and we're like, I wish, you that's, know, I mean, that's definitely how I knew who you were yeah. when I came yeah. to the comedy so store. I'm like, those are the guys from Cheap Seats. Yeah. yeah, so it, it's I'm like, this, those are the guys from the Spider Car. Uh, <laughs> Call back. It was on ESPN Classic. So it yeah, classic. So, right? yes, but I mean, I remember. And, and you know, people love that show, and so when they approach us and say when are you bring it back for a decade we weren't able we were like we didn't have an know, answer yeah. and now we're like we an got an answer it's Here coming you go. back come back this nice. summer fight pass fight pass the right. nosebleeds guys you have to watch it there very exciting okay. have you guys been on the road you got tour days you yes got... a little bit we've been on the road we we go once a month which you know oh. Because we have families and they don't. How dare you take uh, care of your children? And working on the show. It's no, I mean really the family part is hilarious. I said it's like it's like neither in, has twins, right? No, it skips no, a generation. No, no, yeah, yeah. Right, my right. kids could have twins. So yep. we, so we were like, when we were on the road, at most like in the height, we would go two t- two weekends a month. But now we just go one yeah. one weekend a month, and like. For us, we're hardly we're like we're hardly ever gone. But if you ask our family, it's like they're they're all, all the cool. time. Because all the time. It's like the scene in. <laughs> they're in, never here. In, we don't even know who they are. In Annie Jesus. Hall, it's like the scene yeah. in Annie Hall when she goes both to talk to her therapist, and her therapist is like, "How how often are you having sex?" And she's like, "All the time, three times a week." And then he his therapist asks him, "How often are you having sex?" He's like, "Hardly ever, three times a week." <laughs> That, like, that's, that's what exact, it is. The exactly same exactly situation. Right, I'm like, gone four days a month. And they're like, he lives in a suitcase. <laughs> I don't know this man. He's a traveling Which idiot. I, they hate it when we go. So, so I we'll guess at, we should take that when personally. When is this dropping? When is this dro- coming? Uh, I think it's this week. I think it's Friday. Okay. So we'll be at the Moon Tower Comedy Festival, which we love. And oh, that's nice. In Austin. Austin. That's super fun. That's the 21st through 24th. And then next month, we're at the Crocodile in Seattle. Never been there. It's, it's like an old room. rock club that they've redone. That I mean, Oh, it's a rock club. Yeah. Crocodile. I like so that. So that'll I think be it was like a grunge club that was like a 
big pop huge. and cool So clubs. we'll be there May 14th and 15th, which okay. are, or 13th and 14th. Nice. Right? Yeah, so 13th and 14th, I think. Whatever yeah. that Friday and Saturday is. And, I mean, and then we'll be at the store. We try to come here once a week. Yes, usually and do come. Something. It's so, well, thank you guys so yeah, much. Thanks for doing for the podcast. On. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks thanks for you guys are incredible. I'm thrilled about this. We Ricky's got to go do a set, I think. Yep. Um, go get him. Go get him. But uh, you, you killed it in the main room. You guys always kill it. Thank yeah. you so much thanks for you coming on. Thanks, you guys, guys are awesome. Even thank though you're from St. Louis. Hey. Hey. Easy. Easy. Okay. KC masterpiece. <laughs> I, I have like a heart for him because I was a big Rams fan growing up. Sure. And then when they went there, even though Eric Dickerson shouldn't have allowed mm. it to happen. Anyway, yeah. well, that's, that's neither a here nor there. He was... Um, but busy, he was busy greatest show on turf. He was busy cashing the extra money from SMU. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. He got so much money to play He's college still football. Still cashing money. <laughs> yeah, he couldn't compete with this. Yeah, this I mean, he made contract. more in college didn't than he, he did like in the pros. Gold trans- Never yes. paid taxes. So it was a Trans Am or maybe it was Corvette. Well, we're we're fans crazy. of Philly and uh, the yeah, Philly Yeah, because they're so out. Because we love the accent. I love Eric Lindros. Eric Lindros. <laughs> Mike Keenan. Uh, the water. <laughs> Pelly <laughs> Winberg, may he rest in peace. I always, I always say, uh, yeah, there's something in the water, and they're like, what the, the water, 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 yeah. water? Go grab a water ice. I'll never forget <laughs> water that. Ice I saw that on, I saw water that at, like Daryl Hall used so to do good. that show, like sure. live from Daryl's house. My dad used to promote their band in the. The so storefront the of his area. type Okay, so they're store. the Philly they're area. Daryl Hall, who I'd never yes. heard speak. He only, I've only heard him sing. He's got this like silky smooth voice, yeah. Hall of Notes, of course. And like and then all the Philly boy. Then he does his show, and like he has like CeeLo on the show, and he's. <laughs> And I hear him speak for the first time, and Daryl Hall's like, Hey, CeeLo, go grab a Coke Zero out of the French. And you're like, That's what you sound like? That's Hall? <laughs> and you grab that, and you're going home. <laughs> you're going home. Let's go play that well. song. Fuck you, CeeLo. <laughs> and fuck you, Still. too. All right. <laughs> That made me laugh so hard. It's so perfect. It's yeah, because so we're hood rat inner city. We make I fun mean, of that, but we right. love it. On, we live it. for it. You don't yeah. understand how much we are. One of our best friends in the world is from Cherry Hill, and yeah, we as just, soon as we, just we give it to him. Well, we make sure you know he's it. not from Philadelphia. All right. He's from, All right, he you tell he's from Cherry Hill. He's from I'm New kidding. Jersey. Mount Rawr, right. right. <laughs> He's from the mall, if you will. <laughs> he goes to the mall uh, in Philly, a, a Cherry Hill Mall or Deptford Mall. Deptford. Um, yeah, it's so gross. Love it. Uh, but when I'm home a long time, I'll get that accent back hard. Girl. And anyway, all right. So, Rick, Go you have anything to promote? No. You have dates coming up? No. All right. Not I, that I know of. Not that I know of, he says. Um, all right. Thank you. Listen, subscribe, like, the whole thing. Uh, I'm at the Ryman Theater with Kid Rock. Um, when is that? August? No, April 18th. That's Ooh. coming up. Um, and then Uncle Vinny's April 14th. So I think that's next week. I Go think that's em. it for this Have week. Fun. And then we'll be in St. Louis, some club. I forget where. I'm doing it with Dice. Nice. So I don't remember the name. Tell of him it. we love him, man. The Club Dice Tour is happening. Please go Send check his best. website. Send him our um, love. For the real. Scalar Brothers are going to open for him. Uh, and I cannot wait. Maybe he'll open for us. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All right. Good night.